Last year I showed you how I engineered this third PCB motor version, but clearly I've missed some points. So today we're going to revisit this project and hopefully build something better. Before I start this video, let me just recap the version 3 build. Its PCB stator was made from a 4 layer 0.6 mm thick coil, which had a phase resistance of 10 ohms. The shaft was solderable and connected to an aluminum milled rotor, leaving a gap of 0.5 mm. Now some of these changes led to an increase in torque and speed, but I think now I have a solution for all these other flaws. So let's start with the new PCB stator design. I kept the same coil and same motor diameter, then I added 6 slots to make it easier to mount the motor. I also adjusted some sharp tracks to make them more curvy. I connected the three phases to my new custom ESC, which should be a refinement of my older design. The major PCB changes are related to manufacturing and thermal performance. I specified PCB weight to make these boards with an IPC6012 class 3 standard, so that the manufacturing process can be more repeatable and reliable. I also specified to have a high temperature FR4 rating, to make the PCB more robust, even at higher voltages. Now I still wanted to reduce the temperature of the PCB, because it would probably extend the lifetime of both the magnets and the bearing. This can be done with a heatsink, but it will make the motor look more bulky. Instead, I decided to try and dissipate the heat through the copper, connecting all the planes with thermal vias and have edge plating. The exposed polygon pores wasn't connected to a net, but I wasn't sure if it will weaken the coil's magnetic field. To test this, I asked PCBWay to sponsor three different designs, having one PCB without any thermal improvements, another one with edge plating, and a third sample with a larger exposed copper plane. You might be thinking that this last sample is larger than the others, but technically it's just using the area more efficiently, because you always need to consider the tripping connector. The only difference is the extra weight of the copper. Now even though the three stators had identical turns, I found a 0.6 ohm variation between them. This is probably too small to affect other tests. So next I wired up the three motors together with 4.2 volts and started the thermal testing. Okay, so this PCB is being kept at around 20 degrees cooler, but remember that this test was done at a constant voltage. In reality, brushless motors are driven with a PWM signal, so that might create eddy currents in the copper. Okay, so now I'm driving all the three motors with my driver, which is applying a PWM signal. The motors should be a little cooler since we're driving a PWM, but I think the temperature difference between them should drop. The reasoning behind my theory was that the eddy currents in the copper would keep the motor warmer. In fact, for the third sample, the temperature difference decreased. Then I measured the magnetic flux density of the coils, and surprisingly, all the three samples had the same value. I think I was wrong, the eddy currents are not affecting the magnetic field, probably because the copper has no net. But while spinning the rotor, you could see a completely different behavior. Now, last year I milled the rotor out of aluminium, but some people in the comments suggested to make it out of iron. And after doing some research, I found that a rotor with an iron backing should roughly double the torque. The only problem is that aluminium is considered as a soft metal, iron is not. So I got some iron, all I need to do is figure out how to turn this into this. I'm not sure if my tiny milling machine can handle iron, but I'm going to try it anyway. The first problem I was having was keeping the sample in place. The material was only connected with double-sided tape, as my mill didn't have a vise. The small diameter of the rod also didn't help. An iron plate would have made things much easier, but I couldn't find it available locally. So to try and make this happen, I 3D printed a custom mount with a larger area, to keep the rod firm in place. The first attempt almost worked, but at the very end it broke the plastic, and I couldn't realign the part. I gave it another shot, and this time I made the plastic thicker, and I also added glue to make sure things stay in place. And it worked. I decided to galvanize the part to prevent rusting, but this wrecked the next step as some of the spray got to the other side, so the bearing could not fit. Time for plan B.
Thank you Bzibwe for sponsoring and milling my iron rotor. You made my life so much easier because as you can see I'm still a noob with milling metal. The next step is comparing iron with aluminium and see if all this was worth it. In terms of weight the iron rotor is a little bit heavier but hopefully this will be compensated for with more torque. Now with my previous version I have experimented with using a solderable shaft which I found to be a little tricky because the magnets will attract to the solder tip. So the solderable shaft idea is not as fun as it sounds. Instead I'm going to replace it with a bolt, two washers and a nut. There is a little bit of sideways play, but overall I think it's an improvement. The wobble can be further minimized by hexing the bolt halfway through to keep the bearing area solid. However, this must be custom made, so for now I'm going to stick with what I have. Now that the rotor is mounted in place, we can proceed with testing the torque, speed and get more thermal data. I decided to test all these with a 5V supply. Last year I measured the holding torque by testing how many magnets the rotor can suspend but I don't think it was a very accurate way of doing it. Instead, I'm going to use my scale and test two different techniques to see which one works best. I 3D printed this arm and glued it with the rotor. As the rotor spins, it pushes the scale, which is how we can measure the force. The iron rotor managed to create a maximum force of around 1 gram centimeter and the aluminium one managed to create 0.6 gram centimeter. These values are a little smaller than what I measured last year but like I said they should be more accurate. To verify this I also tested another technique which involved tying a string to my scale and pushing the rotor until it moved. This obviously a little bit less accurate than the first method as it depends on my eyeball sensors but the values I got were in the same range. Both of these tests also confirmed that by using an iron rotor the torque would go up. Next are the speed tests. I decided to start by using my breadboard ESC and use the same software I had for version 3. So this made the test fair and easy to compare. All the 6 variants made it to 23,000 RPM, which is the same maximum speed I got for version 3. But none of them exceeded the speed limit, which probably means that the speed limitation has to do with my ESC rather than the motor. But before we talk about the ESC, let's see the thermal data, because I got some pretty interesting results. Just like we observed in the beginning of the video, at low speeds the exposed copper sample was around 20 degrees cooler. This was confirmed for both iron and aluminium. I also noticed that the iron rotor gets slightly hotter at slow speeds. But as the speed increases, the temperature starts dropping for both the rotor and the PCB. Now I have come up with two ways how to explain this better thermal performance at high speed. The first one is that given that the motor is going at higher speeds, airflow could be cooling off the motor. The other reason is that at slow speeds, I'm driving the motor with 100% PWM. I'm only doing this because the motor has low torque. The temperature difference between the three samples also decreased. This makes the motors run at almost the same temperature, but the exposed copper sample still had the best thermal performance. Now my next step was going to be to confirm these results with the onboard ESC. So I assembled and reflow one of each sample, but none of them were working. They weren't even flashing. After blaming multiple components for this issue, I noticed that I had the silliest mistake. Why? The S is supposed to be signal, it's connected to ground, while the ground is connected to the signal. After figuring this out, I managed to get two boards to work, but I couldn't reflash their software. Somehow I burned the microcontroller programming pins, because for all the samples I had, these pins were shorted to supply. These chips are scheduled to be in stock next November, so we're going to have to wait a little bit longer for the ESC video. This ESC should support both Hall effect feedback and a sensorless feedback approach. I'm not sure that the sensorless technique will work given that the motor still generates small back EMF. But I think it should be the way forward, so I'm going to try to make it work, maybe by adding more magnetic poles to the rotor. But from this video I can conclude that the iron rotor and the exposed copper sample were the best match. So I will also be making these changes in the PCB wheeled robot. Now this project took a lot of my time, so I would like to thank PCBWay for sponsoring the PCBs and the iron rotor. I would also like to thank Altium Designer. Altium is the software I use to design these PCB motors with. 
They are generous enough to give me a free license to keep making projects like this. And now they also giving me the opportunity to give my viewers 30% discount on their license. If you never use this software, I highly suggest you get a free trial by clicking the link below. Thank you for watching.